But still, though, the big question here, Bethany, is who is this suspect? Who was able to get inside this school with a loaded gun this morning at Heritage High School and open fire? 13 News Now reporter Evan Watson is there on scene uh, working to, to figure that out as he speaks with investigators. So, Evan, I, you know, that was one of the unanswered questions out of this is, is who is the shooter? And police and investigators say they can't answer that question right now as it's an ongoing investigation. I did grab Chief Steve Drew just as he walked away to make sure the most important thing he said, correct, no active threat inside the school right now. I also saw just about 20 FBI agents just moments ago walk inside the school, following up what Chief Drew said that they are searching to make sure that there's no one left inside there, no student or teacher who may have been understandably frightened and maybe holed up in a spot that they didn't see, did not evacuate, want to make sure that everyone is safe but he confirmed there's no active threat inside the school and and that's good news for everyone who's here meeting up and and reconciling with this i want to go through some of the details and the notes that i took down on my phone right here as you all mentioned off the top that they transported four potentially five students for chief drew to the hospital two of those being shot both 17 victims 17 year old victims a male who was shot in the side of the face and a female who was shot in the leg although chief drew said both of those people are expected to be okay not life-threatening injuries and then he said a third student was had a uh, potentially broken arm. He said he's unclear how that happened. Maybe it was in the rush to leave the school and a fourth individual transported to the hospital with asthma issues. The fifth student potentially said they got an unconfirmed report. They're looking to find out if that student may have transported themselves to the hospital or what happened there. Uh, but again, not life threatening injuries for the students. The school being evacuated and being cased right now was all part of the safety protocols and how they go through this to make sure everything's OK. Chief Drew told me that he understands it's been very chaotic for for parents and families, but they're working on all of that right now. And in terms of his, uh, evidence, he said that some evidence has been recovered at the scene already. They're trying to find that suspect, looking at footage, trying to piece it all together. But it is safe for parents to come pick up their kids as it has been. It's safe for those kids to meet up. Some of the children who may have left or the students may have left their phones inside. They're trying to work through those details right now, getting them in contact with the families, but pleased to come out. And those are the updates we have from Chief Drew right now as we're learning more about this ongoing investigation. And just to hammer home the point once again, he confirmed me directly no active threat inside the school at this moment. It's all right, and everyone's meeting back up once again. Reporting live in Newport News at Heritage High School, Evan Watson for 13 News Now. Evan, thanks for getting that confirmation with the police chief. That was something that was unclear coming out of that news conference, but good to hear. Again, we can, can't reiterate it enough. No threat inside the school, but police are still going to be going door to door, room by room inside that school to make sure that everybody is out. That's anybody who is still sheltering in place. For good reason, maybe still too afraid to leave the room. Police are going to escort them out safe. Yeah, FBI and Newport News Police joining in on that. Chief Drew saying that he's not rushing through that process. He's going to go door to door with the master key. And, you know, uh, Superintendent Dr. George Parker said that the teachers did an amazing job with these drills. Uh, and that's a big part of this is these drills probably saved lives today. And so now joining us on kind of what happens next, these drills they are going through currently, even still in this moment, is Allison Basil. Allison, what are the school uh, leaders doing at this moment? Absolutely. So as Evan said, we just saw them all come together. Chief Drew was here. Superintendent Dr. George Parker was here and several board members to talk with the media. Now, Chief Drew did say that call came in around 1138. They can't tell us exactly where the shots rang out, and, but many students I talked with here told me they think it happened near the cafeteria. But Superintendent Parker said students knew immediately what to do. Um, he says they practice active shooter drills multiple times a year with students and teachers. So immediately they started to hide. Teachers locked the door doors and they waited until those rooms were cleared. And yeah, as you said, um, Dr. Parker gave those teachers kudos for this stressful situation. He said they were able to clear rooms um, as teachers and officers got the OK to head outside to the tennis court. So again, this is something they do all the time um, just in case something awful like this were to happen. But over the next few days, you know what happens next? We did ask Dr. Parker. Um, he says most likely he didn't give us a definite, but students and teachers here will move to online learning for the next few days. Um, this is just to make sure, you know, students and teachers are OK. They said he says they already have counselors ready to talk to students and teachers and just kind of get them settled down over the next few days as you know, we're still investigating exactly what happened. But um, just to move those students on to virtual, that's the plan for now, um, but they are kind of still trying to figure out exactly where this happened, um, but they again will keep us updated with that. Um, Chief Drew did also talk with some um, community
community members here, just trying to calm them down. He talked to a few pastors that just want to help them talk with the students. So I believe they're going to let them do a little bit of that as well. But yes, just expect here at Heritage High School, students are going to be online for the next few days as um, the school board kind of and the school division gets things settled down. But that's what we know for now, Bethany. Allison, we're looking over your shoulder right now. It'll be off to your right, and it looks like maybe those were SWAT team members. Were they coming out of the school, or did it look like you, uh, to you that they were going inside the school? I didn't see the SWAT members going in and out. I did see them clearing some activity on the roof, um, but they're kind of clustered here now, I would assume, as they're trying to figure out exactly where those shots happened. Um, but yeah, I do see them right there in the cluster, but I, I didn't see them actively going in and out as I was on the presser, Dan. Allison, thanks for that clarification, and we can tell you uh, that there is, again, no threat inside the school. So if those SWAT members were going inside, it was simply to help canvas the area and clear some of those rooms. And they said they'd be doing that for hours, right? Chief Drew said the FBI, the police, they're all going to go door to door with a master key, not just the classrooms, but the closets, the bathrooms, each stall, just in case someone is still hiding and doesn't have their phone on them. And a lot of these students did leave their phones inside of the school as they rushed out. So if you haven't been able to get in contact with them, just know they might not have their phone and you know talking about the school part of this this is a huge uh, issue of just thinking of how do I get in contact how do I get there just know if you are driving out to get your child right now or you're waiting to figure out how to get out that way Marshall um, Avenue down by Heritage High School is completely impassable that's the road you would take to get on and into uh, Heritage High that road is completely basically shut down with traffic just at a standstill. Now, Roanoke Avenue also kind of starting to become impassable. We know at least 30 officers are in your way to get to your kid that you have to kind of talk to to get to those tennis courts. Just a, a fearful moment for parents, especially they're trying to get to their kid. Yeah, no doubt. And 13 News Now anchor Jana Roach is in the studio now. Jana, I believe you, you spoke to one of those parents. What are you hearing? Yeah, I did speak to one of those parents and you can just imagine you're a parent. You drop your kid off at school. I did that this morning. I dropped my kid off at a Newport News High School and then hours later you get a phone call and it is the absolute worst nightmare. Well, Cynthia White, her, her daughter goes to Heritage High School. She's in the 10th grade. She got a phone call. Thank goodness that call came from her daughter. And of course she rushed to the high school just like all the other parents did, had a chance to talk with her. This is what she had to say. So she called me to tell me that they were on lockdown and the shooter was actually on her hallway because she could hear the shots and it was very close, she said. She said she, she it was close. And so they were on lockdown. I just want to know how the heck somebody got a gun in the school. I thought they had metal detectors, but I guess it doesn't help. They don't use them. And you didn't know anything about it before she called, or did you? Had you no, heard? No. Mm -hmm. um, she's she was the first person to call me and tell me about it. I would imagine that the school tomorrow will probably be on virtual learning, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just the the school's going to need to do some recon on what happened with their process and how a gun got in the school. If they have um, metal detectors. Everybody needs to be getting wanded or, you know, not just the people who are late or what. I don't know what the deal is, but somehow a gun got on premises and how that happened. I don't know, but they're really going to have to. Mm -hmm. They're really going to have to tighten up on whatever happened. They're going to need to find out what happened first and then tighten up on it because that's that was just a crazy scene to, to pull up there and see all the parents you know, waiting for their kids and parents walking away with their kids and the kids crying and school taped off. That, that you don't want to see that. No, you don't. You, you, you don't, don't. want to see that. And that's not how I envision my day going today. I'm no. sure nobody envisioned their day going like that. But that's another, you know, mm -hmm. a, a symptom of these kids not knowing their worth, I think. I, I just seriously think they don't know how valuable they are and they don't think they're valuable and so whoever the shooter is he has ruined his life the people who's who's alive who he shot uh, god forbid if somebody died i mean that's for for what
for what? You think about just how tragic this could have been. Now, Cynthia White tells me that the school went on lockdown. This is the information that she received. The school went on lockdown at 1146. At 1215, that's when she got the email that something had happened, that there had been a shooting at the school. And her daughter, she seems to be doing okay. She's okay physically, but not necessarily okay mentally particularly with the shooting that happened right there on her hallway. She didn't know who was involved, just fortunate that she was able to get out there, get out of the school as quickly as possible and to the tennis courts. And as you can hear from Miss White, she has a lot of she has a lot of questions. So there are a lot of things that need to be answered. And that is how did a gun get into the school to begin with? And I know that police are on this situation. The superintendent is on it. Everybody is trying to get as much information as possible. But that is extremely critical to this entire investigation to make parents and students begin to feel safe again. Back to you guys. Janet, if I can just ask you on a, on a personal note as a mother of Newport News children who have been through the system and one still there, I mean, I'm hearing from one mom who says uh, her daughter doesn't want to go back to school tomorrow because she was on the same hallway where this shooting happened. What, what kind of conversation can you have with kids tonight? Uh, uh, even if they're not a student at that school, what can, what can you say to uh, make them feel better? Well, you certainly need to hug them. That's what I'll do with, with my son um, and just have a talk with him about how he feels. Of course, this makes me emotional, um, knowing that he is at a Newport News public school, a high school. And, um, you know, it's one of those things when you, when I listen to Cynthia White talk about it and how she just went on and on about, you know, I couldn't play the whole thing, but just the, the symptom of gun violence that is so pervasive in our country right now and how no one is immune. Um, and so I think the best thing that you can tell your kids is that, hey, I'm here for you and I'm always gonna support you and I love you very much. And that's what I'll tell my son. And I know that a lot of other parents will be saying the same thing. Jana, thank you. Thank you for that. And you know, we, we talked to a, a parent earlier too, Kim Osborne, who drove so quickly to get to the school. She said when she got there, not many police were on scene yet even then, but she reunited with her daughter. And we even spoke to her daughter. I believe we have some, some of the sound that she, she had a reaction when she was coming out of that school. I was walking I was walking out of the cafeteria because lunch just ended and I was walking a bit, a bit past the first hall and I just heard a few loud bangs and I just looked up and looked around like what's happening and everyone just started running and pushing me over. I did fall to the ground for a split second but I had enough strength to get up and run out of there as fast as I could and I made it out in one piece. I guess it's hard to really imagine a situation like this so um what was the sense um, or what was on your mind? What was on everyone else's mind as you guys were trying to get out the door? From the first bang I heard, I didn't really think it was a gun until I, until I really saw everybody just rushing out. And I, said, and I just said, oh, my God, it's a shooter. So the first sense I had was like panic. Like, am I going to die? Tough sound there from an 11th grade student, Tiana uh, from Heritage High School. You know, if you're just joining us, this all started. They got the call at 1138 at Heritage High School, mm -hmm. Chief Drew says. And we know two teenagers, two 17-year-olds were taken to the hospital. Uh, one female that we know was shot in the leg, one male shot in the face, the side of the face. They are expected to be okay. But the biggest question is the shooter. Yeah, and so you have police at the hospital talking with those detectives. You also have police who are worried about tracking down whoever was responsible for opening fire inside Heritage High School this morning in Newport News. And right now we don't have that answer for you. Police, uh, they haven't given us that answer if they have it. They say they are confident they're going to be able to track down this person. They say there is no active threat inside that school. Uh, police Chief Steve Drew stopped short of saying there is any active threat in general, but he said that the victims knew the shooter and he said, quote, I don't believe this person is out searching for community members. So it's why it appears people are resting easy outside that high school, uh, that things was, were relatively calm within just an hour or so of this first happening. Yeah, and you can feel the emotion. That's I think the biggest thing you're feeling now is just the kind of did this just happen? 
type of emotion that these parents, that these students are dealing with. But again, calm overall. Chief Drew is saying the word confident over and over. He's confident they'll be able to figure out who did this, give people more answers as the day goes on. We know they are currently still putting police units in the school. That's not because there's an active scene, but more so because they're just searching the school at this point to see if there's anyone that's still hiding in a closet, in the bathroom stall. FBI and police are going through the entire school doing that. Yeah, they're going to be checking every single room to make sure that school is clear this afternoon and that everybody can be reunited with their family members as one woman, Kim Osborne, was with her 11th grade daughter. I was walking, I was walking out of the cafeteria because lunch just ended and I was walking a bit, a bit past the first hall and I just heard a few loud bangs and I just looked up and looked around like what's happening and everyone just started running and pushing me over. I did fall to the ground for a split second, but I had enough strength to get up and run out of there as fast as I could and I made it out in one piece. I guess it's hard to really imagine a situation like this. So, um, what was the sense um, or what was on your mind? What was on everyone else's mind as you guys were trying to get out the door? From the first bang I heard, I didn't really think it was a gun until I, until I really saw everybody just rushing out. And I said, and I just said, oh, my God, it's a shooter. So the first sense I had was like panic. Like, am I going to die? That was Tiana, Kim's daughter uh, in 11th grade. Kim rushed to the school to pick her up as she was telling us it took her uh, almost no time to drop everything and of course go get her daughter when she sent her a, uh, a text in all caps just saying come get me. Yeah, and you know, that's the biggest thing is phones too. Uh, Chief Drew mentioned it, uh, Dr. George Parker with Newport News Superintendent there. He said that some students and teachers and staff left their phones in the school when they rushed out. So if you haven't been able to get that text or send that text, uh, just know they may have left their phone in this school uh, also this afternoon. We also hope to learn about any potential counseling that could be available for nearly 1,200 students. Uh, that's the attendance that we could find. Nearly 1,200 students who were part of this today uh, flew a school on reports of an active shooter. Uh, we'll, of course, be passing that along to you as, as we learn. It's still so many questions uh, that we hope to answer today, uh, not the least of which uh, how those two victims will be doing in the hospital. Again, they are expected to survive both 17 years old, but also the search for that shooter, a very active day unfolding at Heritage High School in Newport News. Absolutely. I mean, even this, the question of security checks. How did this happen? You know, we heard uh, the superintendent say it's random, random security checks through that school. That's another question a lot of us are asking. All right, it is 1:59, and we are wrapping up our coverage here on 13 News Now. You can get more on 13newsnow.com, more reports from our reporters there on the scene on Twitter and on Facebook. Uh, an emotional day playing out at uh, Heritage High School as families still reuniting with loved ones and students inside the school, but everybody expected to survive. And as we go off air, download our app, stay online with us. Those will be where you can get the most constant updates. If not, we'll be again here live again at four this afternoon. All right, for Bethany Reese and Jana Roach, I'm Dan Kennedy reporting for 13 News Now.